It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Yamaha Outboards, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Calls, Limwalker Game Calls, Wild Seasoning, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, and Scent Blocker. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in a warm cabin tonight with my good friend Dan Defaw. Sitting here, going to talk a little bit about something that you do during the summer with a couple of guys from down south. Absolutely, and I tell you what, got our Deer Camp Coffee here, and you you put me on the spot here. Now, I'm going to give us a little shout out. Yep. This cup, you said, don't break it. This little, is a very special cup of mine. Right? Uh, it's a Spot Shooter's Archery Cup. Yep, from the late Jim Beasley. I, I got my hands on that cup, so it's... Uh, you're the first one to drink out of that cup. Well, I've had that thing put. It back. should be retired to the cabin, and so mm-hmm. it doesn't get broken. But uh, yeah, I tell you what, it's it's <laughs> it says it's 81, but I tell you what, the humidity out there right now it's the, blazing. Right, it is hot. So, but either you know, hey, it's August. Talk to us in six months when it's yeah, cold, cold. Snowing. Yeah, right. But, but you know what, deer season's upon the way, so let's get into it tonight and talk about some of our supporters. Absolutely. You know what. Uh, buckbaits.com get over there it's going to be about that time get your orders in and if you use the promo code unj20 you get 20 percent off your order at buckbaits.com we're going to be at woods and water with them here in southeast michigan uh, september 11th 12th 11, something like that 10 11 12 and that should be a great show hopefully the weather holds out be good to go go check out the puppet tent all right get those food Food fall plots in. You're gonna fall need the p- food plots. Yeah, exactly. So you're gonna need the Packer Max. Get over there to <laughs> PackerMax.com. Talk to Lincoln Rome. Give him a call. Say, hey, Lincoln, I'm gonna use the promo code UNJ25, and so you get twenty five dollars off your order when you talk to PackerMax.com and Lincoln over there. You know, we're getting close to September first, goose season here in Michigan. Uh, JPO Game Calls. I tell you what, they got the Omni Series. We're going to have him on in a couple weeks talk about that. And so he's also got some deer grunt tubes. Get over there, jpocalls.com. September 15th, the squirrel season. He's got squirrel calls. He does, absolutely. UNJ10 for 10% off your order over there. Now, all this hunting and all this food that you're bagging, you're harvesting. Don't get me going. You got to get over there to wildseasonings.com. Use the promo code UNJ2021. Get 10% off your order. Try it on everything from vegetables to your game and everything in between. You can try try it on your popcorn. That's right. So, leads us. We started off the show with Deer Camp Coffee. Deer Camp Coffee Roasting Company and Outfitters. That's right, folks. We drink it. We like it. No cold brew this week. No. You got to make some. I'm going to make some for next week. Use the promo code UNJ10. Uh, get 10% off your order at DeerCampCoffee.com. And ask for the exclusive UNJ label. We have our uh, light, medium, and dark roast Absolutely. available. Yep. So we're going to have our own label with them. Make sure you ask for it and save yourself a little bit of money. And uh, it will help us and it will help them as well. And that's what we're drinking here tonight. Deer Camp Coffee. Got to love it. It is that. And a big shout out. Um, we're waiting. Uh, the ho- the guest that was supposed to be on tonight, we had to delay him a week because he is on daddy duty. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's waiting to become a new dad again, uh, Josh Blaster. Uh, haven't heard, so good luck to you and your wife on the new one that's coming along momentarily, I guess. So His newest little angler added to the family. Which which makes me want to give a shout out to the rest of the Yamaha guys we've interviewed. Uh, tomorrow is travel day for them. Next week is the tournament. He is not going because of that. Uh, so... Uh, Joe, watch the head-to-head walleye tournament. I'm telling you what, guys, this stuff is action-packed. You've heard us talk about it, but these guys, uh, they're they're slaying the fish, man. Where are they at this week? They are in Nebraska. Nebraska? They got walleye in Nebraska? Right. That's what I said. I thought they grew corn out there. They do. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so good luck to those guys. Uh, We'll talk to Josh next week. And then we'll get the lowdown, what's going on with everything out there. Like like Mike said, 
you wouldn't think of it, but when you're in that last hour, last ten minutes, and you're trying to make the cut or win the when you're head to head, yeah. it's it's kind of cool. Not it is lie. cool to watch on TV. So or watch it on Facebook. Actually, that's where it's at. Facebook Live. Exactly. So go on, go over there, talk to Andy Cleveland, head to head fishing dot com. Uh, speaking of fishing, we were young. Mm-hmm. We were young. I used to roam around the backyard with flashlight, water the lawn, wait, yeah. go get the night crawlers. Yeah, and stuff I like did that. the same thing, man. That's know, how right? we used to how we used to get our bait. Exactly. You know what? And you ended up. We've talked about this on the show uh, through Indiana, through David Boggs, a, a group. Uh, Backwater Legacies. Exactly. And you met a person, and he's kind of taken it one step. Well, actually, a couple steps further than that. Yeah. So uh, give a little backstory to that. Well, uh, we met a bunch of kids. We had them up to our deer camp, and they come up for a late season doe hunt. We had them up there, I think, two or maybe three years in a row. And uh, the last group that we had up there we met this, this young guy. Uh, his name is Zion. And he shot a doe on our place. And, you know, and we started talking about, you know, our hunting philosophy, the habitat stuff. And he started sharing with me about what he's doing with habitat, you know. And back then, this was like, I want to say this was three years ago, two, three years ago. So he would have been, I'd say, 14, 15, somewhere in that area. And, you know, I thought, man, I said, he'd be a good fit for the Mossy Oak Pro Staff uh, for the, the habitat team that, that you and I are on. Yep. And, but he just wasn't old enough yet. So uh, I guess uh, he decided that he wanted to, to get into the outdoor industry as quickly as possible. So uh, he, he decided to venture out on his own. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring his mic up here and introduce him to everybody. Uh, him and his brother, Zion and Xavier Dunaway. Hey, what's going on, guys? Good. How are you guys? Uh, we're roasting up here, so it's got to be hot down there in Indiana. Oh, yeah. It's hot down here. <laughs> hot and humid. So, but yeah, you, you heard us talking about you a little bit about the backstory there, but, uh, you know, you and I, we talked a lot about habitat and stuff, but uh, you guys yeah. decided to, to go in a little bit different direction. Uh, I'm just going to throw it to you. you. You come up with your own bait company for fishing. Yeah. Now, where did that come from? How did how did you guys get started with on the fishing side? Because I thought you were like all deer hunting, but you know, you, obviously you're yeah. not. Yeah. So um, about two years ago, um, they started the, a high school fishing team here at our local high school, and um, I kind of got into the soft plastics as like a hobby, and got like I don't know the basic hundred dollar package just to get started. And uh, I don't know. Then uh, COVID kind of hit, and we were out of school and. Uh, I was just kind of started posting pictures of what I was making and I was talking to my buddies about it and stuff and everybody was liking what we were doing. So I um, told Xavier, I said, this is something that we could really kind of take off with and maybe even start our own company doing it. And so uh, we went through everything to get our LLC set up and um, making an official business. And uh, we've been an LLC now for just about a year and uh, just the amount of growth that we've had and the opportunities from everybody else in the industry and everything is just, um, it's amazing. Just started there at our local high school and started fishing the local tournaments and um, it really just took off. So you, you've always had a love for the outdoors, but uh, fishing as well. I mean, because like I said, you and I, we just talk exclusively about deer hunting. And, yeah. and I didn't know this about you on the other side though. But when you started talking about this, I mean, I got to imagine, like you said, you know, COVID hit and you're, you're, you're playing around making your own stuff. And what did your parents say when you threw this idea to them? Uh, they were kind of all for it. They, I mean, we've always worked, you know, um, cut firewood all winter long and everything and worked on a farm. So whenever we had a, I uh, guess, a business idea, they were all for it. Yeah. And um, my mom helped us get all the uh, papers signed and everything because the bank doesn't want to give uh, LLC license and the state doesn't want to give all that to minors, so yeah. Okay. So now, they, now, now remember, folks, exactly what they just said. We're talking to two owners of companies that are minors. How how old are you guys? I'm 17, and I'm 15. Okay. And, and here we are, two young gentlemen from Indiana, started their own company, see something down the road. Mom and dad are helping them, which is great. I, I give kudos to mom and dad to helping them, and not yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. Hey, we, they did everything to get you where you needed to be. And you actually won something for this idea. Talk a little bit about that and how that all played out. Yeah, so um, actually the guy that is in charge of our high school fishing team teaches a business course at the middle school. Yeah. And um, he had heard of the Innovate Within Business Pitch Competition, which is the largest uh, pitch competition for high schoolers in the nation. That is actually here in Indiana. And he kind of threw the idea at me and said, you know, this is something that you should check into and 
Um, I met with him after school one day and we kind of sat down and filled out the initial paperwork to get us registered for it. And uh, I really didn't think anything of it, to be honest. I just, no. you know, was doing it because we could do it. And um, then we actually got accepted and uh, was asked, asked to compete at the regional level, which there's uh, 10 regions in Indiana. And then uh, we won the regional level, which I was shocked about. Uh, and then we went on to the state competition, uh, which had the top 10 teams in the state um, out of 840 something students this past year. And um, through that, we went through a six week um, boot camp where we got to meet with entrepreneurs, um, CEOs, just anybody that could help with any sort of business marketing, um, anything in that. And uh, through that, we got all these different contacts. And uh, at the state competition, um, we had to do a pretty, it was pretty much like a shark tank pitch. Yeah. Okay. Um, go up there on the stage, pitch our business idea, um, show all of our finances, um, our, our growth, and all of our customer segments, all that stuff. And uh, we were actually lucky enough to win the finals, um, which allowed us um, $20,000 for uh, business startup capital um ten thousand dollars each in scholarship funds and um, they flew us out to phoenix arizona for uh, five days to meet with some of the um, phoenix is actually the fastest growing city in the country right now as far as entrepreneurs and business so just getting to meet with all those different contacts was a uh, great experience yep you know that's awesome and we showed a picture we went to the report that you had uh you took a picture even you both with the governor so the governor was involved uh how was that um it was i don't know the whole thing is just uh shocking yeah it was was really shocking (laughs) shocking just the contacts yeah the contacts afterwards and everything i mean you just uh, been able to meet so many people that you know you never think of yeah um you know a year ago if somebody would have told me that we'd be where we are i'd have laughed at them yep a little, a little nervous given that sales pitch? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Did you guys practice? Yeah, uh, a, little a little bit. But, like, honestly, I was working uh, out of town most of the time before that, so we just kind of, on the way up there, looked over our business pitch and everything and um, kind of winged it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, uh, awesome. some, not gonna lie. Sometimes when you wing something, that the is the best. Right? Because if, if it's honest, if, if it's honest, yeah. and it, it it doesn't come across as robotic. It, you're, mm-hmm, you know, yeah. here you are. Your your first take at it, it. It is what it is. Take it or leave it. And obviously, you guys hit it out of the ballpark with that one. Because if you guys won it, went to Phoenix. Yeah. Great job. Well, let me Thank ask you, you what, what were you guys up against? What were some of the other ones that made it to the finals that, uh, that oh, you guys beat? I mean, um, one group, uh, they were taking Asian carp skin cells and turning it into a uh, burn remedy, which actually reduced the amount of time that burn victims would spend in the hospital to, by about 90%, I believe, and cutting the cost down to a couple thousand versus tens of thousands. Yep. Wow. And then um, one group had uh, artificial intelligence where they were um, being able to implement that with large corporations such as uh, Cummins and Ford and uh, GE. And they were actually making it to where um, it was for hiring services. So this company could actually put in their resumes into the system and it would uh, go through and select the top 10 um, job applications. And that way, um, resumes were unbiased. Wow. Um, I mean, I mean were, the, the competition that we went up against was uh, remarkable. Okay. I, I'll, give, awesome. I'll give the, I'll give the Asian carp one a, a kudos because man, love to get rid yeah. of those things, man. Yeah. Don't yeah. Have, you know, so <laughs> have a good use for them, right? Get rid of them and then yeah. use them for something. That is awesome. That, you know what? It sounds like you were up against some tough stiff, competition, stiff competition to, to yeah. come out and, and beat them, which was awesome. But I tell you yeah. what, we're, we're coming up onto our first break. When we come back, let's talk more about your company and where we're going to go with that. Okay. All right. We're going to step outside, take our first break. We come back. Uh, we'll continue the conversation. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com.
Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Uh, you know, Danny, when they told us <laughs> the competition they'd beat out, I mean, we were showing you guys when you were talking about it, and literally Danny and I's jaws, both our jaws hit the floor. We're just like, oh, my gosh, man. I mean, that's that's some serious competition. You so, know what? And, and for the people yeah. for the people <laughs> listening or watching on Facebook, uh, tell them where we can go fi- you know, find Southern Indiana Bait Company. Well, you know, Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we've got a Facebook page, um, Southern Indiana Bait Co., and then uh, same thing with our Instagram, Southern Indiana Bait Co. Um, you can go on there, um, place orders or anything, just send us a message. Um, you can see a lot of our products on our uh, pages there, and we're actually working on getting a website up and running. So that should be up hopefully in the next month or so. There you okay. go, folks. So, so if you're watching Facebook or listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, get over to Facebook, Southern Indiana Bait Company. Check them out. Give them a like. Share it. Uh, got a question here. Uh, Mark Coleman from Indiana, he wants to know, is there any grants or government funding available to help you guys get uh, get a little more established? Yeah, so uh, we're actually working with the Small Business Development Center and the Innovate Within Startup Foundation um, to help us get some more grants and stuff to look at. Um, and then just be able to further grow. So, yeah, we're actually looking into that right now. Okay. So with that being said, uh, and where you're at right now, what what are your goals? I mean, do you have like a five-year plan, a 10-year plan of what you look to see the bait company going? Yeah. Um, so, like, our main uh, mission, I guess, is to get more youth involved. Um, so we sponsor a lot of the, like, high school tournaments around here and stuff. And uh, we're going to start uh, – we're talking with a couple of local high schools and uh, colleges and stuff to try to get – where we're sponsoring the next generation. Um, and if we can just grow, I, I mean, we would like to make this a full-time business for yeah. us. Um, so to get to that point would be uh, our, our dream, I guess. Um, just get to the point where we can, you know, further um, expand our, our own fishing knowledge and the entire community. Okay. Well, you brought up your fishing knowledge. Xavier, yeah. who, who's, yeah. better, who's better fisherman, you or your brother? Uh, to be honest, probably Zion. Really? Okay. I thought, man, I was going to throw you one. You, you had your chance, man. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you had one bigger fish than him, you should have thrown it out. Said, but I caught the bigger fish. You know. So with your baits that you have, um, I'm showing the video right now of the, the the molds that you got that came in. Who's between the two of you comes up with the the ideas to what's next on the agenda for the next lure? Uh, we kind of agree on it. And- yeah. A little bit of both. Uh, really, we look at what our customers want. If there's a certain style that we keep getting a- asked about, or um, we're actually working on some custom molds right now, so that we can get our own custom lineup going. Um, yeah. Okay, so you guys work yeah, together. Just, you guys are always working yeah. together, and and you know that's awesome. That's one thing is, is you know it's a family business, obviously. And as things mm-hmm. get further down the road, that's one thing you guys are going to have to learn. Uh, yeah. Because I was in a family business, and we kind of got to know what our little piece of the business was so that's awesome mm-hmm. you guys are working together um so with that being said um with the baits you have now what what's your what's your top bait that people are asking for we sell a lot of our crawls uh, and our twin tail spinner bait trailers you got any of them right there in front of you you can hold up uh, yep so here I don't know if you can see it well on the camera there's our twin tail spinner bait trailers um it's just your I'll get one out of the package. Here. Yeah, take them out of the package. It's better. So these have the little twin tail kickers on them. Uh, give a lot of action on any type of buzz bait, spinner bait, swim jig, anything like that. That's a go-to trailer. We work with um, several um, jig manufacturers and spinner bait manufacturers to actually put this bait on theirs to sell with it. And, and then uh, this is our crawl. Okay. The uh, claws on actually have a lot of action, enough to probably put on uh, spinner bait and stuff also. I personally do that with our claws. Uh, I prefer the bigger profile bait myself. Yeah, man, it's, uh, the claws on our crawl has that, um, it has a lot of water displacement, so whenever you're talking about needing that extra uh, water movement to get that fish's attention, uh, our crawl is my go-to bait for a Texas rig all day long. Yep. So, so you guys, so that just didn't happen right away, right? You guys had to work through getting the size of those claws to the what you wanted. Yeah. So uh, that we we tried out a couple different crawl molds and narrowed it down to that one as our number one because it was so universal and uh, any t- anything that you could think as far as like a jig trailer or a buzz bait trailer or anything like that or even just. 
uh, Texas rig, and it it kind of fulfilled all the needs yeah. in one one crawl style. So, you know, and then that from there you you got it you you got into some you got some stick baits as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what's what? So as you're as you're getting the next one out, um, what's like a favorite color? Um, depends on what I'm throwing and time of year. So in our crawl, it would probably be Okeechobee crawl, which yeah. is at the dark blue over a watermelon laminate or just a straight green pumpkin um here's our stick worm that's in our rainbow trout pattern um, it's really popular sell a lot of them in this pattern and then um, i primarily fish a six inch finesse worm an eight inch magnum finesse worm or a 10 inch curly tail worm um, that's what i've had my success on the past two years actually just won the um high school division tournament on our eight inch finesse worms a uh, week and a half ago and uh that we've got a secret color in that we've been winning tournaments on so we're gonna keep that one a secret <laughs> and, <laughs> that's nice and he's not gonna tell what it is <laughs> and, and it's on lake not gonna tell you either right? that's right that, 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 that that's, that's awesome. awesome you know one of the questions that uh people you know not gonna lie you walk into your your bigger stores back stores and, and there is just what separates you guys, your baits from the competition? Is it your quality, the price? Do you, do you give a little free shipping? What, 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 what's all involved? So what really sets us apart is our durability. Um, you know, we've worked with three different um, plastic, plastic saw manufacturers to find the right blends that we like for each specific bait as far as the um, how much action it will have and um, the durability before it will break on you and everything. That's like our frogs. Our frogs, we actually use a uh, floating blend of plastic, so you could actually fish them just on a weightless hook. Um, so it's a durability that we have and the quality. We hand inspect every bait that yeah. goes in the bag. Um, you know, with our baits, you don't get the flashing. You don't get the bubbles in them. and No dents or anything like that. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the customizability that we offer, too. Uh, we do a lot of custom orders for jig manufacturers and stuff. If they've got a jig pattern, they can send it to us, and uh, we can pretty much match it to a T. Uh, so, yeah. How many how, how many baits do you sell on average, like, say, in a week or a month? I mean, are, are, you, are you guys constantly working and, and cranking these out? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it varies. Sometimes we could sell, you know, $100 a week. Some weeks we can sell $700, $800 worth. So, really, it varies on the season, too. And, like, um, we're kind of ending our spring and summer season. We're still getting some orders here for guys stocking up here in the fall. But um, right now we're kind of running a bunch of inventory for our winter and spring shows that are coming up. Um, we've actually got a show down in Knoxville, Tennessee, at the East Tennessee Fishing Expo, and it's the biggest one on this side of the Mississippi. So um, we're going to try to take 6,000 packs of inventory to that show and hopefully sell out. Wow, that's cool. That would be awesome. <laughs> you guys selling out, I'm sure that would be fan-freaking-tastic. I mean, it's like yeah. you guys, you know, and like you said, it's a big show. It's in Tennessee, so as far as this COVID thing's going, I think everything's open, so that that. Mm-hmm. That'll be good for you guys to, you know. Well, when you're you're making different uh, lures and you're making different colors and everything, it, do you see differences? I mean, I'm not that big of a fisherman, so, I mean, you're probably going to go, yeah or no. I mean, you should know that, but I don't. Is it different region by region, you know, I, like up here in the north? I mean, do yeah. you see more of like one certain kind or certain color go to the north versus the south? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like down in Florida, a big color we sell a lot of is June bug. Okay. At, you know, a lot of our Florida guys want June bug. Um, around here by us, it seems like it's more green pumpkin. Uh, yeah, more of your natural stuff like that. Your really dark colors for um, night fishing or fishing muddy water. Um, and then like up by you guys, we've got some guys that are more like the smallmouth and walleye, and usually that's going to be like our swim baits. Um, or our neds or finesse worms and in our swim baits a lot of the guys up by you like those brighter colors that chartreuse and those bright purples and stuff yeah okay so now we know what to get right exactly when we go walleye fishing exactly <laughs> and, uh, and i think i think josh was using a purple pedal tail i think dark on, purple on Mil- miliax when he won yeah i think so no, no, don't yeah. quote me on that but uh yeah so definitely was, was that the one where him him and uh and joe oh they, yeah they caught like yeah where joe set the record that yeah, day they're going at it were, okay that was over that was 100 fun. pounds of fish yeah that was fun watching those guys catch walleye like that uh bes- okay so we've talked mainly baits that you, you said bass and walleye do you make anything for the smaller fish panfish crappie bluegill something anything like that 
So funny you guys mentioned that. We just got some molds in to add to our uh, crappie and panfish lineup that we haven't released yet. So uh, oh. be, be looking for that here in the future. Really, our uh, twin tails can do bluegill and crappie and stuff because I fish them like that personally. Yeah. What's your favorite? What? Okay, so Xavier, what's your favorite yeah. fish to catch? Is it a bass? Bass. Bass? Yep. Same thing with you, Zane? Bass or if crappie. I can get on a good crappie bite. Yep. Okay. All right. Why why yep. why the bass so much? Is it just because they fight so much and you got you know uh, you got them on there? It's more like a game fish versus something you can throw on the dinner table. I don't know. I like the, really for me. It's something that you can show off. For me, the bass fishing is more of a it's a strategy. So I mean, crappie usually in the springtime you fish structure and you're, you're catching them. Okay. But bass, it's a I enjoy trying to run over the whole lake and figure out a pattern and put you something together. Work. Yeah, I feel like the bass you have to work more for. Yeah. Okay. It's not just like, hey, you just fish off the end of the dock and you're pulling in pan fish or right. you get in a crappie hole and all of a sudden you you pull out, you know, 10 or 15, you got a good mess for, for dinner. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. No, it's, you know, that's what it is. And, you know, like I, like, like up here, we've got guys that, that, that go for bass. We got them that mm-hmm. go for walleye. But while you're doing that, you know, you're going to run into pike and, and stuff like that. So it, they, each, right. you know, they each got their own little thing that they want to go go fight. And some have a preference. You know, walleye, it, I went out a couple weeks ago after some walleye. That was fun. But a good bass bite is, you know, that's always good fun, too. And, and a lot, yeah. you know, these small ponds provide great fishing. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, you yeah. don't have to go find a big thing of water. You know, you get a small right. pond. It can be several hours of fun there. Well, yeah. them smallies that we were uh, we fished for about four years ago up on uh, not is Long Lake up near Alpena. Yeah, what were we, we on use- Fletch- Fletcher's Pond Water and Fletcher's Flood yeah. both. Yeah, what were we using? We on were that? using uh, the Yamamoto's. Uh, we were using the wacky Sinkos. rig. Uh, you, yep. Wacky rig with the Yamamoto's, the okay. five inch Yamamoto's in pumpkin uh, and I think perch at the time. Uh, we were using those. Um, and that was that was some fun fishing because you could see all the way to the bottom and literally yeah. when you were over them you you could see them coming after them so that was kind of cool but yeah we were using yeah. the Yamamoto Cinco's. okay yeah. yeah and you mentioned the perch pattern we we came up with a perch pattern here um actually for guys that fish on Lake Brookville which is one of our uh, smallmouth lakes down here and that seems to be a good killer there too yeah and it also depends on what time of year right yeah yeah Yep. You know, you get those little, little, you know, you get the, the hatch there in July and that, and, it, you know, the pattern will change as, as the season goes through. So, mm-hmm. you know what? We're coming up onto our second break. Why don't we step out, we'll come back, and we'll talk more about your company. All right. We're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. I don't know about you, Danny. I really don't. <laughs> Welcome back. Third segment of the show. Uh, we were talking in the break, and, and you know, and we were talking with you, and you mentioned uh, trial and error. So, you know, when do you, and I, we use the term cut bait, but when do you cut bait with a lure, with a, uh, something you're working on? Is like, it's just not working. I mean, is there, do you give it so long of a time? Is it, where does that line get drawn? Uh, for me, depends on where I'm at. Like, if I'm fishing somewhere down here, like Patoka or Monroe, which usually that's uh, somewhere that, you kind of got to know the lake and hope yeah. that you're fishing the right thing because you're usually not going to get very many bites that day. Yeah, okay. um, it, it really depends on where I'm at, time of year, um, what the water, you know, color is, what temperature is. Um, I mean, I'll, I usually start off in the spring throwing a crawl most of the time. And usually if I can't get bit on a crawl or a finesse worm, then the fish aren't going to bite. Okay. <laughs> so and usually I stick with my natural colors for that time of year. Um, I, I, biggest thing I think is try to stay natural because yeah. if you're fishing the natural stuff, you're usually going to get bites anyway. Um, mm-hmm. unless you can figure out some other pattern that's, you know, if you can find that one color that they're just hitting better that day or that week or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, biggest thing is, I think is just do your homework and know, 
just know the, how the lake usually fishes and what it takes to win a tournament and what guys are usually using there. Okay. So, so you guys fish the same tournaments, right? Yep. Yep. So now you guys I, are brothers. So obviously, do you guys discuss like after the day of practice or anything like that, what's going on? Or is it like, we'll talk after the tournament? Um. Well, I'll tell you what, this uh, past tournament that me and my partner won, it was pretty nice catching a couple nice fish with them sitting there, sitting there uh, watching us. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, usually if there's a pattern that we're running throughout the day, um, I'll text him if I'm catching them good and say, hey, we're using this bait on this color. Um, try it over there where you're at or whatever. Because um, for us, we're fishing for points. So if we can both get in the top five for the year and go fish the state classic, then that's what matters to me. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. uh, so you guys are actually working together in a way yeah. to get into the top five. That's your main goal right now is top five gets yeah. into the states. Okay. Xavier, how many times have you outfished him in a tournament? Zero. Oh, really? Yep. Zion's been schooling you all this time, huh? Okay. What, what, are you going to let him have it, though, when, when you finally beat him in one of these? Are you, are you just going to rub it in really good? Or you just... Yeah. No, sure. I'm waiting on it. You're waiting, sure. You just tell him to bring it every week, huh? Uh, yep. <laughs> Xavier, I'm going to tell you what. It is like the... I have an older brother, nine uh-huh. years older than me, and I was just in your shoes. And when that happens, man, you let him have it. Well, we, yeah. we saw that when Josh Blosser won, his brother stopped fishing the last 15 minutes and came all the way across the lake to watch him win the tournament. Yep, he stopped fishing and came over watch to support baby his brother. brother. Yeah, yeah. watch his baby brother win the tournament. So that, that that's cool. And, and yeah, it's, a, it's a, one of those feelings because uh, it is a cool thing, not going to lie. Uh, uh, one of the questions that did come in, speaking of, can you recycle used baits? Yes, yep. you can. That's kind of where we got started, really. Really? Um, Do yeah. you think you might have like a buyback plan or a discount plan to ensure repeat business? Uh, yeah. So is he talking about like use baits or? I, I'm. It's all in the same question. So I'm. I'm thinking okay. that it's it's using recycled used baits. Would you have a buyback plan or a discount plan to ensure that the, you have a repeat customer? So usually we don't do that just because there's not enough there, like saying, you know, a pack or two to melt back down. But like we've worked with guys that have like a full Walmart bag full of used plastics and ask if we can, if they can ship them to us and then we can just melt all that down and run it and, um, and then ship back baits. And we usually do that and just base it off by the hour on a price because we're not out any material per se on that usually. So. But that isn't that isn't that overall isn't that kind of hard to repeat the uh, if they're not all the same color to repeat what the color they're yeah. after. Yeah. You so need... usually whenever we get a big bag like that, do the dark and light colors. Yeah, you can separate it into your dark and light colors, and usually you end up getting a brown. So um, usually it's some sort of brown color, or we can add black colorant to it where you have a uh, really black uh, bait, and it's just has every color glitter in it you can think of. Well, that's what I was saying, because once, once once you come out with a color, and then you have another color, there's no way you could mix those colors, or else you're going to end yeah. up with black, right? Black with, much, yeah. with, with with rainbow speckles. Yeah. Yep. No, it, it, it's, 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 gen, it's virgin material. It, it's, it's a virgin color at that time, but when you start mixing. But, hey, if they want to send it to you and do that, that's kind of awesome. That's kind of a yeah. – you never know what Just kind of color through. you might get out of it, right? Right. And then I've got – we've got guys, too, that will donate – just old baits to us and everything and or we'll melt down all of our uh, leftovers and uh, extras and just whatever it comes into and we'll make a couple gallons of plastic in that color and uh, we usually give that away for um, at tournaments and stuff for giveaways and um, usually at the high school tournaments we'll give them away to the kids that show up and stuff so and that's, that's a great promotional tool. Absolutely is a great yeah, promotional yeah. tool. And speaking of great promotional tools, you guys uh, gave away, as I'm scrolling here frantically trying to find the, uh, it was for the um, doo, 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 Fishing for a Mission. Yep. You, you guys provided a, 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 some packs there. So, mm-hmm, yeah. you know, that's awesome. And, and it, I got to admit, listening to you, to you guys talk about wanting to give back and wanting the future of the sport to grow. And granted, you guys are only 15 and 17. You guys are at the mm-hmm. at the beginning spectrum of that thinking. At that age is incredible. It is very incredible. So I'm going to say hats off to your mom and dad for the way they raised you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. 
Absolutely. There's just one thing that just, you know, it. you guys have talked so much about continuing on the sport and helping mm-hmm. people continue on that sport. Shoot, it's hard to find out where some of these guys fish because they don't want to tell you because they're afraid you're going to go catch their fish. Right. But yeah. here you guys yeah. are working together. I know you guys are only in high school, but you're working together to both get to the state final. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, it's not like, hey, I'm not going to tell you, but it's really yeah. cool. It, it is refreshing to hear. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. It's one of those things you sit there and, and you know how to go. You've heard it. You've been at the, the big shows and everything. Yep. And these some of these guys walk around like, you know, they don't stink. But guess what? They put their pants on one leg at a time like we all do. Right. And you guys yep. are on so level-headed right now that it's hats off to you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to see people uh, of your age to be able to come away with that that forethought of giving back and wanting to encourage more people to get into the sport. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things, you know, uh, down there when you guys are fishing these tournaments and stuff like that, you know, just getting your name out with your, your, your company and passing mm-hmm. it along and doing the promotional work mm-hmm. that needs to be done. You guys are, yeah. are hitting the road running. You guys have already proven your business model because you won. And okay. you guys are doing wonderful. That's, that's awesome. So where do you guys see yourselves five to ten years from now? Are, are you, you, you you thinking you're going to stay into the plastics or you, you kind of might want to go into other directions of the bait company? Well, um, right now we're like the plastics is keeping us like overloaded busy. So, yeah, I mean, we uh, have everything to make jigs and crankbaits and yeah. stuff like that. We just don't have time for it. Yeah, we've got all the material to tie flies and do all that stuff. But uh, uh, we're going to continue with the soft plastics for now just because we're that's what we're doing good with. Uh, but I mean, in the five year future, um, I could see us for sure getting into some of the hard baits and some of the jigs and stuff. Um, or even partnering with a couple of uh, other companies that already do that. Um, like I said earlier, we, we work with uh, a lot of jig manufacturers, such as uh, Bowtie Jigs and uh, Mr. B. Lure Company out in California um, that actually use our baits as trailers that they sell with some of their baits. And um, really just in the five years, we can, which I think we'll be able to turn it into a full-time business for yep. us both. And um, if we can provide jobs and stuff here back home and, um, be able to expand, and I mean, right now we're working out of our garage, so uh, right. Really we need to. Uh, you might, step you might, that up. might need to get a uh, office front or. Uh... Yeah. So, yeah. so let me ask you about that. Um, talking with these bigger companies, I don't know. Have you met them in person, or has it all been over Zoom or phone calls? Uh, we've met several of them in person. Yeah. Okay, so what is their response <laughs> when you guys show sure. up? Yeah. And here you uh, are, a 15 and a 17 year old, looking across the table or shaking, whatever. And they're, what's their initial reaction to seeing you guys? Um, usually, at first, they're you know we'll have a couple phone calls and they don't realize that we're high schoolers still. Yeah. So then, whenever we go and meet them, they're they're kind of thinking it's going to be somebody else. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I literally uh, their, their initial reactions are pretty shocked usually. You know what? That's awesome. I'm that not going to cool. lie. You know, because, you know, you get into some of these meetings and it, it's shirts and ties or whatever it might be. And all of a sudden they look across and you got you two, you, you two guys, you know, and all of a sudden they have to now switch gears to what they thought who they were going to meet. Now right. they've met yeah. you. Do, uh, yeah. do you, when you go to some of these meetings, do you take your parents with you? Do they sit in with you and help negotiate or do they let you guys usually, do it all? Usually it's just, just us. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Speaks volumes. It speaks vo- again. We're gonna go back to your mom and dad because letting you two guys go at your age is just awesome. You're not. They're not sitting right behind you. Mm-hmm. You know, say this or yeah. say that. It, nope. You, you make it or break it. You guys are gonna do it. So yeah. you know, yeah. that's awesome. But I just had to ask that because I know for sure if if you were to say, hey, you know, I want I want you to use my bait on your your jig, and all of a sudden here I come across this table, and here's two young guys. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Good job. Yep. Um, Mark Coleman says, uh, his favorite soft plastic supplier stopped making his favorite lure 20 years ago. He bought out the last few hundred. It's called a chicken foot. Have you ever heard of it? Okay. No, I haven't. Well, Mark Coleman, you're going to have to show us and post a picture of what a chicken foot is. Show and us your chicken foot. Show us your chicken foot. It's, <laughs> it's for a, uh, small mouth for creek fishing. And it's in mm-hmm. chartreuse in color. So we'll try to get a picture of it so we all know what a chicken foot is from Mark Coleman. There you go. Pretty cool. 
I tell you what, we're bumping up here on our last break. Uh, let's go ahead and take our last break. We'll say the rest of the time we got to kind of wrap things up. Yeah, absolutely. Ask a few more questions and have a little fun here towards the end. So we're going to step outside. We'll take our last break. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Last segment of the show, and... I want to give a quick shout-out. Denny Steiner's back from Africa, and he's watching tonight. Denny, man, you slayed him again. That's all I can say, man. You did, Denny. We're going to have you on the show. We've been watching all the pictures you've been posting uh, and breakfasts. Yeah, right. Uh, We're going to have to get you on the show here in the next month or so with those pictures. Uh, Talk about it. How was your trip and how it all went? We'll definitely talk to you about that. Uh, Mike, if you switch to my screen... um, Big shout out to 123FM in the Upper Peninsula here of Michigan that carries our show. Uh, it's What's the temperature in Newberry? Seventy nine right degrees and sunny. Seventy nine and sunny. And don't forget, folks, you go up there, you got to get a pizza at Cedars, and they carry Deer Camp coffee. So go check them out. Have have a good pizza there. Uh, Julie at Buck Bait says it's a great pizza. We got to get up there and try it out. We do got to get up there and try it out. So uh, get over there. Big shout out FM 123 in Newberry. That carries our show. So thank you, thank you. All right. So where were we going with all this? So. I forget what we're going to talk about now. We're in the last segment of the show. You said pizza. I know, right? Yeah. He will send a pic later. I only okay. have the pearl color left. All right. We'll, we'll talk about that later with Mark Coleman. Um, all right, guys. So we've talked about your company. We talked about how you got there, where you're going with it. Uh, you talked to him. You're, you're also background. You're kind of looking at deer hunting. So let's talk a little bit hunting. Let's leave your bait okay. company. Let's talk a little bit of hunting. Um, now, what's your outlook for hunting? What's you guys' take on hunting for this coming season? Is it looking good? Um, my cameras are looking pretty good right now. I've got um, I've got one buck. It's um, he's a main front on his right side. He's got five points, and then his, on his left side, he's got a brow tine, and it comes up, and he's got a big like ball, five four or five points. So I'm kind of eager to see what that looks like after velvet comes off. Wow. Um, if if he walks by, he's gonna be a hard one to pass. I think he's a four year old this year, and then I've got a six year old uh, mainframe ten, but he's got a bunch of kickers and split G twos. Um, he's probably pushing that 155, 160 mark. So he's right now my number one hit lister. And then I've got a mainframe 10 that's either four and a half or five and a half this year. I'm going to have to see him in person to really get a good judgment call on him. All right. You, but, uh, you guys yeah. share stands or not? Well, uh, I'm not really a big hunter. You're not? Oh, okay. No. He's busy over uh, fishing trying to make sure he can catch bigger fish than you while you're out hunting. Well, I've already done that part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're not a big hunter. What what other what other things do you like? Uh, really, I'm just big into fishing. All right, so you're you're gonna stick That's into about the fishing. All I do. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you this: If fishing's your game, uh, are you bank fishing? Are you boat fishing? What's your preferred method? Uh, I prefer to bank fish. Okay. Yeah. You guys got boats? You run boats? We literally just got yeah, a boat just got Saturday. What, okay, what'd you get? So we just we just got a little twelve foot uh, John boat with a live well and two trolling motors to start with. So uh, there you go. But yeah, like at the tournaments and stuff, uh, I go with. Uh, we actually have to have a captain for our high school division. So uh, my captain happens to be my partner's cousin, and um, Xavier partner. Uh, him and his partner get to fish with uh, some of the guys that fish for the Bass Pro Nitro team. So yep. Okay, right on. Got to like that. Yeah. Now, going back to hunting, you got your food plots in? So, right now, I'm finishing up. I'm getting ready to broadcast and then call the pack. Um, I've been waiting on the rain here the past, I don't know, about three and a half, four weeks. And we just now have got rain this week. So, uh, got everything ready to go on that. And then uh, just got word today that I got drawn for a couple uh, hunts at the Big Oaks National Wildlife Refuge this year. So, I'm excited for that. Uh, yeah. Gun or rifle? Uh, they're they're gun hunts. So. Okay. Now, are you are you in a shotgun zone or are you in a rifle zone? I know Indiana's uh, so got some different here, rules. 
Yeah, so on any public ground down here, it's just the um, pistol caliber rifles and um, the shotguns. But on private land, you can use high-powered rifles now. Okay, that's the way it was so, when I was down in Indiana a couple I still, years ago. Yeah, I, I stick with the 44 most of the time. Um, sometimes I get out my grandpa's 30-30 uh, uh, and I'll deer hunt with it some. But other than that, it's a 44 in, in my PSEs, so... There you go. There you go. Question for you, too. Uh, number one, we'll go with uh, Xavier. Who's your favorite yeah. fishing Who's your favorite fishing celebrity, fisherman or woman? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm probably going to go with Kevin Van Dam. And, he, and, he, and he's got his name plastered all over some baits. You got that right. Yep. You, you know? See, so, you know, all right. So, Zion, yours? Um... Uh, probably between Scott Martin and Brandon Polinick. Brandon I tell you, Polinick. I, I like tell you that. what, we yeah. interviewed Brandon Brandon last year. Great guy. I followed him on YouTube watching um, his stuff. Uh, great photography and everything. But yeah. We had him yeah. on. He was actually yeah. pre-fishing. He was, he was pre-fishing out in Lake St. Clair. St. Clair for yeah, a tournament. Yeah. That was this spring, wasn't it? That, that was last. Or was that last year? It was last summer. Okay. Because it was all messed up because of COVID. COVID, that's right. And yeah, uh, yeah. it was funny, not going to lie, he had the camera tilted up at him, mm-hmm. so he wasn't going to give away where he was fishing on the lake. Nobody could find yep. any landmarks. That was great. So, <laughs> yeah. But Another yeah, great one, guy. So, yeah, Mark. And I, go ahead. So, Mark Coleman, you're giving away your age by saying Hank Parker. Not going to lie. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even though Hank Parker's a nice guy, we met at ATA and said yeah. hi to him and stuff with PSE, and they're usually in the booth right around the corner. So, But uh, it's all good. Um, and another question, we're jumping back between fishing and hunting. Uh, what are you going to be planning? Clover, brassica, peas? What, what are you going to be uh, so broadcasting? This year... Um, last year I did a mixture of turnips, uh, sugar beets, radish, clover, and winter wheat. And this year I'm going to go with a radish, turnip, and clover mix. That way I've kind of got the greens and then I've got the early season radish and the late season turnip. Okay, sugar beets. That's interesting. I thought that was more of a northern thing. They love them down here. Probably because there's not a lot of, of uh, exposure to them. I would imagine once they get a taste for it, they love them. Cause they yep. want... Usually it'll take them two or three years to get used to it, but once they find them and know what they are, better get ready. Yeah. Do you notice that once the first frost hits that those sugars activate and it becomes sweeter, yep. do you know you get more action on them then? Yep. Usually that's why I put in the radishes because they love them. Usually right as our bow opener. And then as soon as we get a good heavy frost or late season, the, those turnips and sugar beets usually work really well. There you go. Oh, Mark Coleman actually give us his age. Yeah, you know, I know, 51. Yeah, he's right in there with us. He's in our wheelhouse. <laughs> yep, absolutely. But, uh, you know, like you said, when you're planting stuff like that, and you, you got to catch that rain. Because if you don't catch that mm-hmm. rain, it doesn't work yeah. well. Yeah, yep. we, we've had a good dry, or a hard, hard, dry summer here as well. Right. So, but, uh, yeah. you know, when, you, when you're when you going down that road of what the, do you plant any uh, rye, wheats, anything like that? Uh, I'll do a winter wheat usually. I'll throw that in some some falls, and then I like to put it in with a clover mix in the spring too. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. Hey, do you know what the pH of your ground is by chance? This year, it's right at six point eight. So. Mark Coleman, he's got you beat by point three. See, he's doing his homework, man. He's right. He does his homework. Now, last time you and I talked, when you were up at our camp, you were working mm-hmm. on a timbering project. You were doing some timbering on yep. your in your hunting property. How did that yep. turn out for you? Uh, really, really well. Um, I, I favored the oaks in that harvest, and uh, I cut the bottom lands fairly hard on the poplar and uh, soft maple and the sycamore. That uh, got a lot of good regeneration from that for bedding and for browse. And then up kind of on the upland areas, like I said, I cut it to favor the white oak mostly. And I've got a lot of good white oak regeneration. Um, the amount of bedding I increased is exceptional, and the hunting over the past two years has just blown up. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. You see and a then, lot of stump, uh, stump sprouting on those soft maples? Did they come back? Yep, and... soft maples and poplar, there's all kinds of stump sprouts, and they're just mowing them down. Yeah. They're yeah. mowing them down, so, and, it's gonna, and it gets thick. Yep. That is awesome. Yep. I know up on our property... It, during July, it was in those, those thickets. Was it, how many years has it been since you've cut yours? <sighs> this will be third third year. Third year, so and it's third one year, of the, mine was well, mine would be what three summers ago. Yep, yeah, three summers ago. Yeah, okay. and I tell you what, you see a deer on the road and they take two leaps 
into that thick stuff and they're out of yeah. sight and out of mind. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to continue doing some uh, timber stand improvement across the property, and then actually took all the income from that sale and we put in a, a one and a half acre pond, and then um, did that, and we've been stocking it, and then doing some more habitat improvements with that income. So. So that one and a half acre pond is on your hunting property. Yep. yep. So you're using that like a water hole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I built it more as uh, somewhere to go. It's kind of up towards the front of the property, so we swim and and uh, fishing it it. and then but since i put that in i've seen a lot of deer activity coming to it okay because that seems to be one of the latest things in water holes is is water holes and i was just wondering you know like some like some guys go take a hundred gallon tractor supply uh water Water, and they'll go plant it out in the woods and fill it up and make sure you that but you're seeing it with the 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 plot you did with the size you did being as big as it is bringing the deer mm-hmm. forward you think that's going to yeah. change your a little bit of your deer movement on your property yeah so the way i set up the habitat is the woods is kind of like a horseshoe and then i've got a um in the front section we've got 12 acres of tillable which is now about two of it's taken up by the pond and the dam and then um i, I leave that in grass and then i'll uh mow it uh by or by or every other year i guess and then uh, the and then I've got two acres that's kind of a finger off the main field that goes cut right through the middle of the property, and that's where I've got my food plot. And then I did all the habitat improvements and all the timber stand improvements in that horseshoe timber. So, but what a kinda, plan! Not only do they yeah. have their own bait company and they they developed this from ground up, the the guys know how to set up deer property too, right? Well, yeah. They're, they're learning, yeah, you know. Actually, yeah, uh, that's what I'm. I've worked an internship all summer doing habitat improvement and stuff, and uh, with a private forester. And my plan is actually go to Purdue to get my bachelor's degree in forestry and wildlife management. So there you go. Isn't that a David Bog school? That's a David Bog school. Oh. You've been listening to David too much. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but but David knows his stuff too, you know. So uh, yeah, that's that man. You're on the right right track. You know, speaking speaking of the future stuff, uh, you know, Xavier, what what are your goals and aspirations for when you're done with school, high school? Uh, I plan on going to college for business. Business, so you're going to run the company and you're going to make uh, Zion work for you, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. See, so that's the plan, right? <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to lie that 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 I in our family company. I was the bookkeeper. My brother was the worker. So I get it. And you, you, you learn, like I said, you each learn your, your spot. But ex- you, have you guys ever ice fished? Uh, the closest I've come to ice fishing is when I was up there with Mike and I fished there in the trout pond. Oh, you did fish there? Yep. Okay. I, I didn't know if you guys ever got out. And, but there was that was, wasn't was even frozen then, I don't believe, was it? No, there's still open pockets. Yeah. That, that pond yeah. very rarely freezes completely over. And if it does, you still don't get on it. I tell yeah. you what, we're putting together a little trip for February? Hopefully February. Stay in touch. If you guys want to make a trip up to uh, Wisconsin, we might be able to, to drag you along with us. Put okay. you on some ice, awesome. thick awesome. ice, Sounds thick good. ice. It, well, trust yeah. me, Mike and I. It, you know, we're not we're not that first ice, best ice thing. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. It's got to be thick. Yeah, Mike's yeah. my Mike's my tester. I send him first. He sends the big guy out. You know, uh-huh. and if I don't fall through, it's safe for him. See how he treats me. Right. <laughs> so, but no, seriously, we'll we'll see if we can't get you uh, tag along with us for a weekend up there. Uh, that or come up here if you guys want to come up this way. It's uh a lot of fun yeah. we'll, we'll build a fire for you right on the ice awesome <laughs> right that 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 right there when you do that you got good thick ice and you build a fire on it people it, they lose their minds they're like what are you doing but yeah yeah it stays right on top it's pretty cool then we drive cars on them too hey we're, yeah. we're land planes so yeah it's one of those things man yeah. we've we've chewed up an hour here i know right uh, <laughs> you know what? tell us where we can find more about southern indiana bait company or sib co Yep, uh, you can just go check us out on our Facebook page and our Instagram page. And uh, if you go there and follow that, then uh, be looking for a website here in the next month or so. Yep. Okay, yep. so they can go there. They can go right there and place an order to your company yep, right there. Send me a message and, yep, just send a message to the company page and I'll get right back with you. Okay. Hey, do you have prices on, on your page or no? Uh, I, they may not be posted, but um, all of ours are 550 a pack and then. They range in the number per pack depending on the style of bait. Okay. And uh, if, if they send me a message, then I'll send them a message back to our complete price list. Okay. 
Wow. I, I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm still just blown away. Number one, at the professionalism of you two. Uh, it's just like talking to two businessmen. I mean, it's hard to, it's still hard for me to grasp that you you guys are in high school. Right. That's why yeah. I asked about yeah. the initial reaction to yeah. some of these businessmen when they meet these young business entrepreneurs that are still under 18. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, Mark Coleman well, works five minutes from Purdue. Look at that. Oh, really? So there, when you get up here, he said, look him up. And then he hits okay. him, he, he'll help you. He'll take you and hit some of the creeks for smallies up there. That'd be awesome. Yeah. You, so you graduate next year, right? Uh, I'm a senior this year, so yeah, I'll be graduating this year. So you'll be graduating 2022. in 2022. 20, 20, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. And, and then when they're at these big shows with all their baits and everything, and they hit it big, we can say we knew them when. Exactly. That's <laughs> yeah. We knew those two guys when. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, hang on. Uh, if you would, uh, we're going to wrap up the show here. So just hang on after we're done, and we'll talk with you a little more. But uh, for those of you on all the right. podcast, uh, go over to their page, give them a like, follow, share on their social media sites. Do the same for us as well. Share the show. And if you're listening to the podcast, uh, go over, uh, through iTunes, go over, give us a review over there. That helps us, and it also helps our supporters as well. And for those of you on the live stream, uh, same thing. You know, Go over to their pages, give them a like, follow, and share, and, and share the show uh, with your friends. And, and go over and check out their website. You know, If you guys are in the outdoors and you're into fishing, take a look at what they've got to offer here. You know, These, these guys are trying to do things the right way. And, and guys, once again, i got to say hats off to your mom and dad because they raised you guys right. And uh, yeah. they can definitely be proud of the two young guys sitting there. Tonight. Absolutely. And so. don't forget, we're also on YouTube. Become a subscriber over there at YouTube. Help us out at that. And uh, look for more from these two young gentlemen. I, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. Like they said, they want to give back. Yeah. I think they're going to be giving a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So next week. Next week, Josh Blosser. Uh, we'll talk to him. He's a professional walleye fisherman. We've had him on the show before last uh, earlier this year. Or was it, it was, year? It was uh, one or the other. I can't remember which of the Blosser brothers we had on. We had them both. Yeah. But uh, he won the tournament. Miliax. Miliax. He won that tournament. We're going to talk to him. Yes. He'll be, he should be a new dad, and we'll have him on next Wednesday night. All right. That's going to do it for us this week, folks. Y'all tune in again next week, same time. We're going to be back on again Wednesday at 7.30. Y'all take care. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Yamaha Outboards, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Baits, JPO Game Calls, Limwalker Game Calls, Wild Seasoning, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, and Scent Blocker. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.